Well, my dear friends, here we are on a Sunday evening, and I've got a special little treat for you. Halloween is just around the corner, and I have got one of the creepiest, scariest pre-Halloween stories that you're ever likely to hear. It's from the wonderfully talented Mr. Outlaw, so glad to be revisiting his work and telling you one of his stories once again. And, well... And you're just going to have to sit back and relax with your favourite drink on this cold and dark October night. And listen. <laughs> I want to start out by saying that I don't know what this thing is. All I know is that I don't want it around me. And I can guarantee that you wouldn't either. Now, regarding a brief background, I bought my house recently. Nothing special, just a medium-sized place located in a relatively safe suburb. I have a girlfriend, Lara, but she doesn't live with me for well, personal reasons. So at the moment, I'm here by myself. Now, I'm painting the situation because this is the kind of place where kids would go trick-or-treating. Not some decrepit department building. Not some house in the middle of nowhere. No, right here in suburban America. The first time that it came was four days ago at around 9pm. I was sitting in my office, working on a document, when I heard a knock at my door and the characteristic little kid voice saying, Trick or treat! Not some weird demonic tone. It sounded exactly like a regular, upbeat kid. I just brushed it off as some fundraising thing and decided not to open the door. I was extremely busy, after all. Out of curiosity, I peeked out of my window, watching as the kid, dressed up in some kind of grim reaper costume, walked down the street. Off the bat, there were two weird things about this. First of all, there were no adults with him. I didn't get a look at his face, but there was no way he was older than five. Second of all, he didn't knock on any other doors. I watched as he walked past every other house until disappearing at a turn. Oh, despite the obscurity of this, it was still a pretty sad sight. But, well, nothing that I thought about for too long. Well, I didn't come back again until the following night. And this is where the detour to hell can no territory begins. I was out with Lara, and we were both drunk when we got back. It was late as hell, so we just decided to put on a horror movie before going off to bed. About halfway into the film, I heard a knock at the door. An upbeat trick-or-treat followed. Lara was quick to react. What the fuck? I remember her whispering to me. I hadn't told her about the first time it had happened. Well, I didn't deem it noteworthy, after all. I looked at her without saying anything, and just put a finger up to my lips. It was barely even a conscious decision. It felt, well, instinctive at the time. I got up from the couch and made my way over to the door. Quietly... I looked through the people, seeing the same thing in the Grim Reaper outfit as before. It was wearing a mask, so I still couldn't see its face. Oh, I really wanted to ignore it, but at the time, I just thought it was a kid, you know. Well, not to be rude, but what if he wasn't right or something? Well, in any case, I reluctantly opened the door. It didn't move or say anything at first, so I asked it something along the lines of, Are you okay? Do you need anything? No response. <sighs> All right, then. I turned around to face Lara and asked what she was thinking. No response from her, either. In fact, she looked horrified. What's wrong? Don't look at it, was her immediate response. Close the fucking door, she screamed. Her sudden outburst made me jump, but I did what she said. 
What the hell was that? I asked her. She shook her head, still sporting the same horrific expression. I don't know, she said. I looked back through the peephole, but the only thing that I saw was the kid walking away, back towards me. I spent the night trying to convince her just to tell me what she'd seen, but her response was always the same. I don't know. At one point, she just screamed at me to stop. I told you, all right. I don't know. That was all I could get out of her. She just didn't know. Whatever the hell that meant. She left immediately the next morning. And it was pretty obvious to me that she wasn't coming back for a while. I did get a parting text from her, though. If it comes back, don't open the door. Safe to say, I was reasonably disturbed. Was she playing a prank on me? Seems rather elaborate, if you ask me. No, that couldn't be it. She'd never done anything like that before. Besides, she seemed genuinely terrified. But it was the only explanation I could muster up at the time, so I went with it. Whenever I would talk to her after that, she never brought it up. I thought that she was just trying to pretend like she had nothing to do with it, and had something bigger planned for me later on. Well, I decided to go along with that as well. The following night came, and I mentally prepared myself for anything that she was intending to pull. I decided to stay in, in order to get some work done. It was around midnight, and I was ready to head downstairs to play some Xbox before bed. And then... I heard it. Trick or treat! Now, if Lara was the one doing this, then she would have wanted me to ignore it. But I could catch her off guard if I actually opened the door, right? The kid was probably one of her cousins or something. Weird that she's making him stay out so late, but hey, anything to scare me, I suppose. I looked through my peephole, once again seeing the grim reaper costume. <laughs> I forced myself to laugh. <sighs> What's Lara paying you, kid? I jokingly asked him through the door. Oh, what a mistake that was. Trick or treat! The statement was repeated, louder this time. It caught me so off guard, but I couldn't place why. And then I thought about it. The words didn't seem to have come from the kid's mouth, but from more of a general area behind him, if you get what I'm saying. I didn't react, continuing to look through, having no idea what to anticipate. Trick or treat... It was deafening the third time. I was jolted backwards before scrambling onto the couch. God, what the hell? I thought to myself. I remained stiff for the next few moments, petrified at whatever the hell was standing on my doorstep. I waited and waited, but nothing happened. I was about to go back up to my room when I saw the police lights flashing outside. They rang my doorbell and started asking me questions. Have you seen anything disturbing recently? Well, I think some kids are playing a prank on me, but not really. What was I supposed to say to him? When I asked him why he'd come, he responded by telling me that the neighbor had called in, saying that she'd seen something horrible standing at my door. No descriptions beyond that. Just something horrible. The cop eventually decided that the woman was off her rocker, but to call him if anything else happened. I thanked him, and he left. The next day, I rang my neighbor's doorbell, hoping to get some answers. I could hear somebody moving around inside, but nobody ever came. <laughs> Looks like she didn't want to tell me anything either. I relayed what had happened to Lara, and she was understandably shocked. If this was a prank, then there was
was no way that she was going to call it off at this point. And this brings me up to yesterday night. I can safely say now that this was never a prank. I was in a cab, coming home late after a night out at the bar with some work friends. As we pulled up to my house, I was preparing to drunkenly stumble out when the driver said something that froze my blood. Who's that standing at your door there? I didn't turn to face what he was referring to. <laughs> Keep driving, I told him. He started to ask me what was going on, but I cut in immediately. Just keep driving. But the guy just wouldn't freaking go. What do you mean go? It's some kid. It's almost 1am. What's he doing out there? Look, we have to call some... He stopped mid-sentence. My head was still facing away from whatever the hell was standing at my door but I could hear the driver's breathing begin to tense. I heard him mutter out, Fuck, before he slammed the gas. I barely had time to react, my head slamming the seat as he took off. I looked over, witnessing his traumatized expression as he sped away. What did you see? I yelled at him. All that he responded with was incoherent babbling. At moments, I could make out, no, didn't see, in his speech. I was so focused on trying to get him to talk that I didn't even notice where we were going. Suddenly, I felt the impact. He'd driven us off the road into a local wooded area. I'd put my seatbelt on, so I was mostly fine. The driver was knocked unconscious, though. I dialed 911 and told them what had happened. Well, not exactly what had happened. Just something that they would believe. That the driver had gone insane and driven us into a tree. At first, they set their suspicions on me. <laughs> no surprise there. But that premise was wiped out when the driver woke up, babbling the same shit he'd been babbling in the car. Nobody got any answers out of him. He remained in a petrified, incoherent state. They tested him for drugs and alcohol. Nothing. Eventually, he was whisked away for some psychological tests. While I was getting treated for my minor head wound, a detective visited me. He told me that there were signs of a break-in at my house, called in at around 1.30am. The window in my basement had been smashed and my front door had been left wide open. In the morning, I went back and looked everything over. It was indeed a mess. My Xbox and laptop were on the ground, and the cash that I'd hidden in my drawer looked like it had been thrown across my living room, with bills scattered everywhere. But with all that said, nothing had actually been taken. Beyond the window in the basement, nothing really needed to be fixed either. It looked as if whoever was here was in the process of stealing my shit when they dropped everything and ran out the front door. Well, that was the law enforcement's conclusion anyway. Not very logical, but logic isn't something that I expect at this point. I have a feeling that something else happened. Something far worse. Typical Mr. Outlaw story, if ever there was one. I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. And it really got to me, to be honest. I'm glad I'm staying with my family this weekend. Got someone to uh, protect me when I wake up in the middle of the night scared. <laughs> well, we'll be back again tomorrow night with another story. Just a special little treat for you on this Sunday before Halloween. Hope you enjoyed it. Well, that definitely is enough for me for one evening. Now, sweet dreams, everyone. And bye-bye.
Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon. So, come check me out, okay?